Hey guys, I'm going to do a review of the Terran Tactical Pit Viper today. Uh, pretty damning review by 1911 Syndicate here recently. Uh, Honest Outlaw had a pretty positive review of this, and I, I think both are correct, and I'll tell you why. So if you look at Honest Outlaw's gun, and if you look at the Terran Tactical website, you will notice that this grip module is different, right? Um, you know, may take a little bit more of a trained eye, but you'll notice it has a second grip screw down here, and then it has a uh, checkered magazine release button. You'll also notice on this side, this magazine release is actually curved, right? It's not a flat magazine release. And what I believe has occurred here is the, uh, what I believe has occurred here is they went from a uh, Gen 1 STI grip, right? An extreme shooter's grip, if you will. Uh, this one actually has a little checkered uh, magazine release button, right? A little checkered button that screws in. Uh, and then similarly, on the back side over here, it has a flat magazine release. And if you notice on the website and Honest Outlaw, Theirs has the Terran Tactical uh, engraving right here on the mag release. And on this particular gun, it does not, right? You can see it has that curvature, no Terran Tactical logo. Now, here's the telling sign is there is a casting mark that's a circle right there. If I show you the Gen 1 uh, grip, it has no casting mark uh, at all. If you look, at a Gen 2 grip, and this is on my Staccato XC. I sent this in for the Extreme Shooters grip service, uh, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same. You'll notice that the cutout right through here um, looks very similar. They, do, uh, they don't stipple it quite as far back, right, as, as um, the uh, Extreme Shooters, but I think the factory one actually has this as well from Staccato. And then if you look at that magazine release, it also is curved. And then if we check out that casting mark, you'll see a round casting mark. So while we're there, this is a Springfield Prodigy grip, no casting mark right there, uh, and just a very different profile in general. It, it has a lot of different features that are a little bit different. Uh, won't get into all that. It does have kind of a curved uh, appeal to it there, or curved uh, magazine release, but it's very different. Uh, and so, for all intents and purposes, talk about Infinity, love Infinities. They've gone to metal grips now, but originally they came with plastic grips. Uh, same thing, that's like a Gen 1, I think it's the same Gen 1 Extreme Shooters grip, uh, flat, mag release, etc. So my belief is a lot of the problems that you're seeing, right, is they either ran into production problems or something, and they switched over from an Extreme Shooters Gen 1 grip over to the new staccato grips. And due to that, it doesn't line up with the frame right here. You can see there's a sharp edge there where it doesn't line up. And then obviously same thing here with, um, you know, the grip safety, it, it creates a sharp edge. And that's very disappointing on this gun. It's the most disappointing thing that I can say about this gun. They, you know, did some type of production change because again, it's not on their website. It wasn't in the early production guns or the demo guns that they sent out. And so this is a problem, right? It makes the gun feel not fitted. The gun is fitted absolutely. I can tell you with certainty that this gun has a level of, of fit and finish to it that is not just slap on parts, right? Um, so uh, you can actually see here where there's uh, filing and sanding done on this grip to make it fit. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of jaggedness there. So that uh, to me tells me that it was fit. Um, generally you have to fit it right through here for it to fit flush. There's a couple of other areas that have to be uh, refined on it as well. Uh, the other thing that I found interesting, so these grips on the inside here have two plastic runners that kind of stick out that help with the magazines. I need to go grab magazines. So um, with my Terran Tactical purchase, I found it odd because, do it that way. Um, what I found odd about this is I have the, the short um, base plate. These magazines are marked Checkmate. Uh, you can see that that magazine is marked Checkmate, Checkmate, and then magically, 
The third magazine is a Staccato 2011 magazine, G3. You'll notice though, that these look identical. All right, I'll show you the short ones so that they're comparable, right? The tubes are identical. Why is that? That's right, because Staccato uses Checkmate tubes for their magazines. They do not produce them in-house. This is common practice um, in the industry that they uh, use different um, you know, manufacturers and that a lot of stuff is subcontracted out. Uh, going back to this magazine, in 1911 Syndicate, they had a problem with magazines falling out, right? Or not coming out, rather, getting stuck. And what I'll tell you is, this has a fair amount of play in it. And we'll see, I may have to get my flashlight over here. You can see that those runners have really been sanded down. Somebody not only sanded the runners down, but any high spot uh, that could possibly cause your magazine to not release has been sanded and fouled and you know manipulated so that there's a, a easy fitment of magazines. Now, besides the fact that that's been sanded, the uh, where the mag well is, this has been blended out to the mag well very smoothly. And again, there's excess plastic here that has to be removed and you can kind of see where they've done that. It's, it's pretty smooth, but you can see where they've done that and smoothed it out. And so that's a lot of hand fitting. I've had these plastic grips brand new. Um, and fit them. And again, the magwell, uh, getting it smooth like that, you have to take off a fair amount of plastic to get it that smooth because they never know what you're going to run. And so same thing though, I find it strange that um, 1911 Syndicate had a problem with these magazines hanging just because of the amount of slop. Now, again, this gun came in before the 1911 Syndicate review was done. And so I don't think they made any changes, but again, it's possible that their grip didn't get that same sanding, right? You could clearly see that it was sanded down for fitment. And so it is possible, maybe their gun got skipped or something. And that's why, you know, it, it, it didn't get enlarged. And so their magazines are fitting tight and not dropping like they should. Uh, that's a very, very real possibility. So with that, let's talk about things that I do think are extremely good. First off, um, this gun has no side-to-side -side frame frame movement. Um, there's no side-to-side -side frame movement on this gun at all. Uh, I'll tell you that the uh, Staccato XCs always have a good bit of frame-to-slide movement. Now, vertical movement, it does have just a click of vertical movement, right? Uh, and again, th they all do. I've talked about this uh, with Nighthawks. Nighthawks hand fitment. It's real hit and miss what you're gonna get in that aspect. They can go from being extremely tight to very, very loose. The other thing that I checked on this gun is that when you pull it back, that movement goes away. And so I don't feel any movement in it now when I slide it back, but there is just a touch of side to side movement in the front. And what that tells me is, is that somebody hand fit this frame because if it was done by machine, it wouldn't have that little bit of, of tolerance like that. Uh, the other thing that I'll talk about that I really like that I think spectacular on this gun is, um, see if you can see it here, uh, but the barrel, right, being bronze, you can see where the bronze barrel's down in there. You know, ultimately you can kind of see the bronze barrel. So this is a threaded on compensator. And the reason I say that is this transition here is so smooth, right? And traditionally, if you thread on a compensator, it would sit one, you know, it, it doesn't time right, what they call time right, meaning it doesn't sit perfectly parallel, right? And this thing sits perfectly parallel with both the frame and the slide. It lines up spectacularly well through here, right? And so with that, um, getting it timed correctly and cut back so that there's no gap there um, is spectacular. That takes... Uh, a level of precision that most most you know companies just can't do. So that tells me that, that, that there was a level of precision here uh, beyond most. The other thing that I'll tell you is uh, this cut, right? This cut um, is something spectacular because they have to cut the compensator, the slide, the reverse plug, and the guide rod all at that angle, right? And they all have to match. And beyond that, the uh, the reverse plug, right, would traditionally be round, and if you cut it, it could technically rotate. 
And so I don't know how well you can see that, but that reverse plug down in there actually has like right here, has these wings that come out. And I'll see if I can't get a better shot of that. I might take it down or something. Uh, but it has these wings that come out uh, that, like I said, keep it from rotating one way or the other so that it lines up perfectly with that flush, right? So that to me is a, another something you don't see beyond that. And then your recoil spring also has to fit flush. And so with it having that angle, it probably has a milled flat spot uh, that the spring sits against in there that would be, again, a, a fair amount of milling work to make these parts, right? That's not going to be something super easy to do. Um, the slide itself, if I were to compare this to, uh, say, this Staccato XC, right? So 1911 Syndicate talked a lot about cost and money grabs and all this, right? Fact of the matter is, um, you know, uh, this Staccato XC's $4,200, $4, give or take, something like that. Uh, you can see how much more machining work went into this slide. There's more cutouts. There's a lot more cuts here, right? There's only three cuts here. There's a lot more cutouts here. There's, you know, a side port cut in. There's these ports on the top side, right? There's, uh, you know, the, the slide itself has more of an octagon shape to it that requires uh, more milling, right? Uh, you can also see uh, there's, you know, their logo in the top. And then, um, you know, just a lot more, I mean, a lot more milling time had to go into making this slide. The other thing that I'll say that they didn't like was that it's not optic ready, right? Um, there are, you know, you can go buy a sand viper, same price, etc. What I'll tell you is, if you look at this, right, they basically just flat surfaced the slide on this, right? It's a fairly simple, they just flat surface it, drew to, drew, drill two holes for the plate system. It's pretty straightforward to do that. Um, what I find absolutely amazing is this if you look at this raised part, right, it's raised, it's cut out, it has a hole drilled for this pin because again, it's not a dovetail site, right? This entire site is integrated into the actual slide. And so uh, it has to be cut out. You can see on this side, it's just a plain flat surface. If we flip it over to this side, you'll notice that they've actually got a rounded cut for the screw so that if it's pushed down, um, you know, you can get your screwdriver in there like you need to, uh, to be able to get to it. And so to me, that, right, they could have just cut that off, right? They could have cut that, that little, little, you know, pointy part off and just cut it flat, but they didn't. They took the time to cut it properly. And again, and so to me, this is a significantly harder milling job to set up and do for this rear sight. And it's a extremely slick looking rear sight. I really like it. I really think there's a lot of work that goes into this front cut, into the slide, into this rear, um, you know, um, rear sight. There's a lot of work that goes into this. The other thing that I'll tell you that they can fit is you can actually see because the sight block is so narrow, it's very narrow right there, right? Just so, so the slide comes up and around it. And um, you see the, the sight here, right? They actually took a, a sight that was too wide and then they, they you know, filed it down, they centered it, right? And then they filed it down, right? They filed the edges down. Um, now, my problem with that is they should have coated it, um, at least cold blued it, right? So you can cold blue it. Um, they should have done something to that site to make it so it doesn't stand out silver color, right? So shame on them for that. Shame on them for the grip. Uh, not the end of the world. I will say... Um, the uh, the dovetail is not the best blended dovetail, right? We'll, we'll talk about that. See how this side is like perfectly smooth, right? No dovetail comes, you, you can't drop a dovetail in and have it as smooth like that, right? You have to blend it to the frame. This side's perfect. This side, the frame is actually just a touch too long. It needed to be cut back just a little bit more to, to blend in without having kind of that. I mean, it, you really can't even feel it uh, when, you're, when you're rubbing it, but like I said, it's actually where the, the frame comes out too far and it needed to be just cut back. Now, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, depressed versus not, but even when this is not depressed, 
this, the frame is a little high right here. I can catch a, a fingernail on it, right? I can catch my fingernail on it. And depressed, it really shows that it's, it's not smooth, right? And if I look at this Staccato XC, right? It has the same thing, right? It's It's got this big gap right through here, right? It's got a big gap, even non-depressed, it's got a gap. Um, and then depressed, you can also see both sides of the frame. There's slightly more on that side than this side, right? But you can see, and I can actually feel a, a little bit of, uh, you know, not smoothness through there, whereas on the Terran, I could not. So uh, again, you can kind of see the Nemesis. It's not cut. I mean, this is an, a fairly expensive option, but you can see it's not cut quite as aggressively as the Pit Viper. But you can even see it, um, you know, the frame has that angle cut on the frame. And 1911 Syndicate talked about how ridiculous it was that, you know, this has the fangs. Guys, that's just part of the design of the gun, right? It's always been the part of the gun. I believe that all of the old combat masters from Terran um, have this cut design. And like I said, talking about having to mill those four pieces to line up perfectly smooth and flush at the same angle, that's a hell of a hard job to accomplish, to be honest. That's why you don't see it on many guns until you get into things like the, you know, six and $7,000 uh, atlases. And even then, You'll notice they use the flat guide rod and reverse plug, right? And then the slide comes out and, and it's buried in because they didn't want to have to deal with the milling operations of cutting it at that angle, right? And so even on this $6,500 Nemesis, this is an RDS version that's even more expensive, but they didn't want to have to, you can actually see it, right? It's, it's not cut, it's flat. Um, same thing with that reverse plug. It's it's a flat cut. And so they didn't want to have to go through that milling operations. And so honestly, to me, this is probably one of the most impressive things on this gun. And I don't think, you know, like I said, I think they've used that design for years and years now. And so I don't really, uh, you know, blame uh, Taryn. I think they used it in the movie a certain way. But again, not a big deal. Last thing I'll say is this trigger breaks at just at two pounds. It's maybe one, one pound, 15 ounces, something like that. It is a <clears throat> fantastic trigger, has a great reset, has the adjustable trigger so that you can wheel it in and out, has a metal trigger, again, better than the staccato. So personally, I think that that's a, a nice feature. It is also not easy necessarily to get a two pound trigger. They act like anybody can do it. Not necessarily. I mean, I won't say it's super hard, but it does require better parts and a little better fit and finish to get a two pound safe trigger. Um, the other thing that I'll say about this gun is it has a great mechanical aspect to it. Um, you know, the Atlas definitely, you can just tell it sounds very different. Um, And so I really like the, the the sound of this gun, the way it racks and everything. Overall, you know, I find it to be an exceptional gun. I think a lot of the milling and machining is exceptional on it. It does have a level of hand fitment. Um, the only thing that's disappointing is the grip, right? The grip got changed sometime, you know, either early production or maybe even pre-production. And they did not refit these grips and that's really disappointing, right? Being that a Staccato XC cost, you know, four grand, 4,200, 4,300, whatever it is, um, you know, I think between the additional milling operations, there's a little bit better fit and finish in general on this gun. There's this entire cut up here. That's going to be an expensive option on, on guns where you could option them out. That cut's going to be expensive. I, I think it has a lot of cool cuts and features that are not uh, standard features that you see every day. I think couple that with the uh, movie prominence, right? Couple it with the Terran name. And, you know, I think that this gun is going to bring a premium. Again, they don't get into movies because it's free and, oh yeah, they want to work with all the gun manufacturers. To get into a movie like that, you're going to have to know people, spend money, market, give them free training, give them free weapons for the, for the movie, 
whatever it is, and he's done that, and therefore he can drive this premium based on that marketing campaign that is, quite frankly, the John Wick movies, right? So uh, I think it's worth the premium. I think it's cool gun, um, you know, and like I said, obviously the market's spoken because they're sold out and they're going for, you know, eight to $9,000 on Gunbroker.